So when you find something that you want to work towards and be good at, and you start to receive it back to you in those forms, you've just found your passion. What up guys? As you can tell, it's getting started on a leg day while I'm here in town in SD here at the Warhouse. Of course, we're warming up and starting with the most important group, muscle group, calves. As we all know, we need them. <laughs> we did a podcast with a financial expert group. These young kids that came to want to do a podcast, they wanted to talk to me, mostly ask me questions and things like that. And it was really funny because um, I wanted to ask them, you know, as well to present them in the podcast and they'll get to know them and what they do. And it's one of those kind of like paper mill, like life insurance, like Ponzi things where you get a certificate saying, you know, you're a financial expert. And I asked the one group what they thought like being an entrepreneur and startup, how important credit is. Surprising response was that they didn't think credit was that important these days. They didn't think it was necessary. Just, I was super shocked. So fundamentally, like, you know, uh, Alex Ramosi, like a lot of these entrepreneurs um, don't really bring up basic credit because that's, you know, some fundamental stuff, but yet it's not taught in school. And I just want to let you guys know, like, if you're trying to start anything, like you hear a lot about, oh, you can build out a gym in 30 days. You can uh, you know, use other people's money. They're talking about credit. And if you don't have at least your credit established, like basically, and you can't get even fundamental lending, then if you gotta build your foundation as an individual for a business to create one, you need credit. It's kind of super important. So that being said, foundation, just to get started, whether you have a passion, you know, projects, ideas, you wanna start m moving forward momentum with business model and all that, you need to have your ducks in a row. You need to have a foundation. And having decent credit and having a history is gonna help you because banks won't, will take you seriously. You know, lenders, you'll be able to get that credit that everyone talks about, and yet no one talks about the basis of starting. So yeah, credit's kind of important. So let's keep that on. Like only at 23 years old, you know, you have about a 750, 740 credit score. What's your total limit that you've had just from having a job and being consistent? It's about 30 to 40,000. 30 to 40,000 credit limit at her disposal at 23 years old, just because her mom was smart, they didn't teach her in school, but someone told her the importance of paying your bills on time, needing to establish credit, just being able to be a functional adult, not to mention the amount of money she saves on car insurance, especially under 25, the amount she saves on interest with her truck payment, stuff like that for a personal vehicle. You know what I mean? Like, So if you wanna start anything, start with yourself, and you need to build good credit. You need to have a solid foundation because it will make your life, speaking from somebody who had to learn the hard way and start with nothing. I had to do all this while I was working my business because I was just like this because you know, military, I never had any education. Nobody ever taught me the importance of it. And so I figured it out the hard way and it made expensive risks starting all my businesses because I had to start and then build credit along the way. Multiple people that I know that are 23, 25 and do not have any credit cards open whatsoever. And because they have a, a vehicle that they bought cash or a rundown from the family, they don't have a car payment and the insurance is very lower with family so they have no line of credit established or open. Your family, one, not teaching you the importance of building your own credit. To be a functional independent adult in society but also they enable it by, oh, we're gonna give you a car instead of you should pay for a car. We're, not, we're just gonna put your name on the title, not on the loan, you know, and then they're getting the benefit of the payments and they don't help them. When parents should do, you know, trade lines, they should do co-signing, so then both people's credit can benefit. Yes. So like what I did too is, uh, and I still have it, I, it's, it's converted since then, um, uh, travel rewards through Navy Federal is really good, especially anybody in the military, family in the military, they're super good. And I also got a business prepaid credit card and I put the maximum of 5,000 in it. And that helped me build it really quickly because not only did it help for the business, which is recognized by Duns and Bradstreet, my NIC number, uh, vendors, like rental equipment companies, like everything I do that gets recognized, it also helps my personal credit at the same time. So I did it for both my business and all that. And, you know, I didn't know any about any of this before, you know? I had to learn the hard way where they're like, oh, how's your credit? And I'm like, my what? <laughs> so it's amazing what we don't know. And the fact that financial experts thought that it doesn't matter, he's insane. Moving on on this leg day, we're gonna go ahead and do some, uh, we're gonna use the belt squat, but we're gonna do the B grip attachment. And we're gonna uh, start warming ourselves up on, uh, like a, kind of like a, a, essentially like a sumo squat. I think ever since, you know, having two back surgeries and stuff, I just find it super um, important to focus on, you know, time under tension, I'm in my 30s, like not going crazy. Of course, I love to lift heavy, but 
you know, you don't want to make sure that you're not ending up paying for it in a negative way. So I just try to really take my time. If I'm going to lift heavy, I'm going to warm up. Plenty of uh, working sets or warm up sets before I get into the heavy stuff. But I get asked what I do a lot. I was in the airport uh, in Vegas from San Antonio and then uh, Vegas to San Diego. And I get asked uh, just a lot about what I do for a living. And the more I do, the harder that question becomes to answer. I usually get to the point where I'm just like, I'm a welder. You know, I, I weld. You know, I tell people, oh, I'm a builder, a contractor, I'm a, a DOD contractor, you know, things like that. I'm, uh, usually people will look at me and they, We'll get a response to the point where they start asking me more questions, a little more in depth. It always turns into a, a really nice, engaging conversation. And when it comes to building rapport and relationships, whether it's sales, marketing, network, entrepreneurship, business, you can never, never miss the opportunity to have a genuine connection with somebody in a good conversation. Because um, you never know who you're going to meet. You might meet a, a billionaire taking a, you know, cheap flight somewhere, you know, that maybe he doesn't fly, you know, private. You might meet. Um, like, a, you know, a mom that started a business or, you know, you might meet somebody who has an amazing, awesome story of survival. Gosh, you never know. So it's always cool. I try not to miss opportunities to have genuine connections with people because you never know who you're going to meet and what that, how, how and what it can impact in your network. So, yeah, it's always a good pointer there. In two weeks, I get to have my umbilical surgery because currently right now I have a nice huge belly button thing sticking out of my intestine, just sticking out of my belly button. So that's fun. But I it didn't happen from lifting and most of my work make it worse but back in October <laughs> I was informed post-op that they perforated my umbilical uh, lining <laughs> so I was given an umbilical hernia after my back fusion so that was fun <laughs> it'll be the first time in nine years I'll be injury free and normal might give bodybuilding a run we'll see interesting topic I'm gonna bring up a term that I've come to figure out and learn also through reading some good material and uh, networking is omnipresence. I'm going to tell you what that is. In marketing, sales, business networking, having and discovering and reaching your omnipresence is kind of like when people essentially tell me that, like, man, I started following you, and now like I literally see you everywhere. You're engaging enough, and your content is hitting algorithm times, and you're getting you know searched enough times that you're not just SEO SEOing it, but you're reach that omnipresence where people have that feeling where they see you everywhere. And that's kind of what you want, so it help you build your audience. Um, recently, one of our good friends, uh, Jim Bro Fitness, and, and James Argy is awesome. He uh, is uh, partnering with, um, I believe it's uh, in the media, uh, and don't quote me, I'll try to remember the name, but, uh, and they're gonna do you know, a 30 day challenge where they're putting out content, good, good quality, you know, twice a month. Um, he did a post about it. Uh, I'll, I'll tag them so you can find them good good quality uh, fitness equipment. They're manufacturing some top of the line stuff. But um, he was saying, hey, we're gonna let you know. We suggest that you guys do it. And I have actually been doing it for over a year. Um, we have our YouTube, our TikTok, our Instagram. We have um, uh, LinkedIn and the Facebook and Facebook uh, Marketplace. Thank you, babe. And um, with that, putting out and staying consistent on like two to three YouTubes a week, you know, a couple of posts and reels a day, you know, um, touching bases and being very active. And so we have created our own omnipresence. And so it's important and it does work. And I, so I can confirm that it does because we have such a uh, intimate um, community. Instead of having like paid 10,000 or 100,000 followers, we have like four or 5,000. But when we send something out, we get for like over 50% engagement and almost 50% easy uh, return of conversion from leads. So having that quality of community with through omnipresence is huge. When we first started over a year ago, you get to a point where like, oh, we had all these awesome ideas because you want to make good content. And um, then the next thing you know, it's like, oh shit, what do we do now? You know what I mean? And Gary Vee can attest to this. When they started doing some of their most powerful ads, they were showing the power of like, yeah, social media, catching attention, how short attention spans. But the biggest thing is creativity. And as you may know, the famous marketing ad that took over the world and it broke the internet was the, it was the Dawn or the, it was a soap company and it was the cat laser eyes. <laughs> and they just did a Facebook ad and it was just like a GIF with cat laser eyes 
and the soap, and it was like, oh my God, you know what I mean? And it was the silliest thing, but it got the most conversion and engagement of any ad in history. Staying consistent, being relevant, doing homework, so even if it's like a silly thing, like, hey, re-rack your motherfucking weights, bring intensity, these things, be genuine, but at the same time, you need to be creative, so play to your market, and it'll help you a lot not becoming stagnant, and also not having these lulls in your engagement and conversion ratios. So that's kind of a big thing right there, that's what I'd recommend. Impact 3 podcast, one of the most successful podcasts on YouTube. One thing I absolutely love is that he's super analytical, hyper-logical, he looks at data, looks at facts, he interviews some of the most prolific people in business, technology, you know, across uh, all spectrums in the industry. And I, I, I love it. Like, uh, he's willing to challenge even mentors on topics when you can tell people are being, like, emotionally biased. It's just super fantastic. So I recommend, you know, any education uh, as far as, excuse me, YouTube channels go is uh, Impact Theory is a, one amazing one. And uh, he has an awesome segment. Uh, he did a short where he's just like, we need to stop glorifying these emotion basket cases that entrepreneurs who are making a lot of click money online based on just telling their emotional story who have actually, in fact, coaches and online coaches who actually haven't built or done anything. Like these are not industry people. These are not success stories. These are people who just made money getting popular telling their bullshit stories on the, on the internet. Whether it's like, oh, a prison, you know, post-prison story. Or it's like, oh, my poor dad hurt me story and I wrote a book and like all these things like, we need to have people who are effective in the economy and in business that are actually gonna be sustained and create jobs. And I'm with him. I'm like, we need to like start recognizing people who are really doing like the work and building something that makes sense and actually being productive as humans. And fuck these fake coaches. So I love that. Impact theory all the way. So you're asking what I think about the the UFOs and the new new information the government's putting out about the sightings and that it's all real and all that stuff. Well, having worked with the intelligence community and stuff like that, I can tell you alien technology is obviously very real. There are actual species out there. I think it'd be super arrogant to think we're the only people developed in the, in the entire universe. Currently, what I think it is, is uh, it's old news. The government is repackaging purposely this administration to just try to distract people because they think we're all stupid from, oh, I don't know, the Hunter Biden case, the shield uh, stuff with, you know, um, trying to target Trump and all of his indictments because of the election, um, the fraud, uh, Epstein and client list, literally everything. And I think American people are pretty super aware of it. At this point after COVID, Dr. Fauci and all the complete communist style, tyrannical bullshit that we've had to deal with. I absolutely love our howitzer leg press. I, I designed and created this thing. It's just unbelievably awesome on your back where um, you can really get in this thing and set yourself up. Um, it's just a fantastic isolateral leg press and uh, it feels amazing. The one thing that um, I think is super important, and I read a long time ago and also learned, is uh, the old saying, and not even a cliche, the old saying that like, you know, treat people the way you wanna be treated. And I think in business, when it comes to your building a community and building your culture, it's extremely important. Like, I love our community at the Warhouse Gym. When it comes to a gym, like, this is a place for people to come and do their thing, and like, I, I wanna see everybody, say hi, like, you know, touch base, make sure everyone's good, and like, I genuinely care, and I think you wanna treat people uh, it, with respect to how you want them to view your business, and it's important. I think it's too much, uh, a lot of people learn it the hard way, and I feel like too many people take like, oh, the egotistical, I'm a business owner. You know, I've walked into gyms downtown, Chula Vista, and like, the owners are just so fucking rude and arrogant, because they just think, oh, I own a gym. I'm the fucking the boss, I'm, I'm a, rock star and I'm just like you're an asshole that's what you are and yeah nobody frequents there more people leave there and come here and you wonder why and it's just the same thing is like you want to treat people in respect of how you want them to view your business how you want you know people to treat you well I want people to treat my business with respect and you know admiration as much as I would treat anybody who comes in and is honest and works hard like it's, it's just a very basic I think fundamental I think two people uh, too many people are not humble enough with respect to the reciprocation of the energy and information that you put out that you don't understand what you're doing is you're either fundamentally hurting yourself and your business by portraying yourself in an egomaniacal way and just being rude and disingenuous versus people who actually care. And anyone who creates a good business 
they're doing it because they care. They're, they're good at something. They believe that they can provide something better in the marketplace. I think that's super important. So make sure you treat people how you want to be treated with respect to your business. If I want to do business, I want to start a business, an idea, how do you start? Like, what do you get into? The biggest thing when, it, when you want to have a good business is problem solving. Any, any, any good product, service, idea is 97% uh, about solving problems. And so for me in the gym industry, um, creating the Warhouse and having a successful gym, it was very simple. Um, I wanted to reinvent the fitness industry or the, the, the way a gym works, like the design of a gym and how it operates. And by doing that, it, all I had to do was solve the problems. So, good example. Um, not a lot of quality gyms are actually 24 hours. So the Warhouse, we secured the facility so not only is it a safe business, but you can truly access it 24-7, 366 days a week if it's a leap year. I needed to make money so it can survive as a business, so I charge appropriately, but in turn, the value I provide outweighs the cost and people recognize it tenfold. So we can manage a limited membership cap and honor that so the gym is never crazy and it feels safe and you're not frustrated, upset. We're not having people run into each other and get crazy and act foolish. So I've solved that problem, you know? The biggest thing too is quality. Like, you know, we stay on top of our, our cleaning staff. All of us participate. I'm not too proud to scrub a toilet. I, this is my business, I own it. I want people to enjoy it. And so when I go into a gym that's maintenance is just bullshit and it's tossed, if you think about this, I had a really good conversation. The bathroom in a restaurant is the barometer for the service that you get. Because a bathroom in a restaurant or in a gym, similar, is something that you don't normally see. You have to open and enter into a bathroom to see it. So it's out of sight, out of mind. So if a business keeps a clean, tidy restroom, that's a healthy place that you can you know, take care of what you need to take care of and not feel disgusted, uh, lose your appetite, things like that. That's the true barometer for the service and how the business is well maintained. So if you wanna be successful, solve problems. I know we've uh, done over this, but I felt like I didn't deliver the right quality. Um, when you're just starting out and say a service base, like your photographer or video production, um, feeling confident and charging prices, like your rates. Many people say like, hey, you know, you gotta eat shit to start at the bottom, work your way up. That's the classic cliche of how things work, but at the same time, it's also how you enter a market. Like, you're, gonna, you're, you're honestly gonna be learning, and so don't be afraid, like, obviously you can't charge the same as the best out there, because you're not the best. Until you become the best, you're practiced, you're credited and proven, then it's okay if you're not charging the, the most. Be competitive so you can get work, even if it's portfolio work and it's almost free. Somebody. And then, as you get more of a draw and you're more accredited with your publications, you can then cordially raise prices when your demand increases. So don't be scared to raise prices when your schedule is full and you need to make time. So know when to increase and when to obviously have a, a discounted price for competition. It's important. Um, I think the biggest thing when it comes to being like uh, successful in whatever it is you're doing, uh, there, is a, there is a certain certainty to the amount that people thrive on transparency when connecting to a product, a brand. And I think developing your brand story is extremely important. Like not just coming up with like a bullshit shirt and being like, oh yeah, this is awesome, check it out. But like, you know, good example, um, the Lion's Not Sheep is a is super, you know, conservative, um, you know, Second Amendment, Constitution, freedom loving, you know, old fashioned American realism, you know, and they uh, do really well. And I think just like with the Warhouse, you know, people have watched me build this brand and place from fucking scratch. They've watched me physically do it, working day in and day out, all night. And it creates the quality and the, gen the genuine aspect of the fact that this is something I've created and I did it for our community, the people, you know, the city, and having a better gym and wanting to expand more. And so we have a story, the brand has a story. And so being sincere and not just full of shit and developing a true brand story is important. Like, you know, it helps to kind of essentially launch you into gaining an audience, being able to deliver quality new products, things to an audience and having that because people believe in what it is and they recognize and connect with your brand and your story. So you can never be too transparent and just be honest with yourself and your community.
you discovered your passion through work, sacrifice, and then people appreciating it. And that emotional response you got fed you to your passion. Does that make sense? Same thing, if you don't have a passion, what is it you like to do? I'm a man, I create things, I, am, I make sacrifices, and I found something I enjoy that other people appreciate, my work. That was my passion and it became my purpose, like to create something and work hard and be passionate about creating an environment and machines because the amount of genuine like love and feedback and admiration, everything I get from that, I discovered that's why we're human. We seek at approval, we seek uh, validation. You know, we can't help it. We're animals, we want to be loved, you know? You find your passion when you find that your service is reciprocated with love, respect, admiration, and validation. So when you find something that you wanna to work towards and be good at, and you start to receive it back to you in those forms, you've just found your passion. And you fall in love with it because you fall in love with the fact that you're doing good and others appreciate it. We'll figure it out.